Okay, so welcome to the last lecture of the course that is our memory testing uh, module number 11 lecture 4. So, uh, in the last lecture if you remember we have discussed that uh, memory blocks comprise a very important part of circuits uh, of digital circuits and uh, the another important point we have said that there are two basic philosophical difference which makes VLSI testing for memory quite different from that of synchronous or, asynch or synchronous sequential or combinational circuits. So, what we have seen that in case of memory the almost all the memory chips that will have one defect or the other. So, if you keep on finding out the defects and throwing out the chip, so you will land into a situation where the yield will be near about 0. So, this is unlike other circuits where the yield can be as high as even 70 to 80 percent and we ship only the normal parts. So, maybe we do not have any faults, but in case of uh, uh, memory fault memory chips the case is the other way around. So, what we have to do is that we have to find out I mean we have to put redundant parts on the circuit not only we have to detect, but also we have to diagnose the faults and then uh, read out the chips by few uh, blowing out some uh, pins or in, uh, blowing out some of the internal connection by lasers or, or some other techniques as we have discussed in the last class. So, that the faulty rows of the memory chip are I mean are virtually taken out and the uh, and the normal redundant parts which are already there are rerouted. So, that I mean the uh, no faulty parts or faulty parts of the uh, m m memory chip or faulty rows of the memory chip are bypassed and in place of that the normal rows are brought in and they are like this actually done in a virtual way by blowing out some fuses few, uh, some of the few, uh, connections in the chip by using fuses. Uh, using some laser techniques or some other techniques which we have already discussed. Secondly, the thing was that in, in case of circuits, it is a very symmetric structure, all the when cells of the memory structure are packed very close to each other. So, unlike sequential circuits or combination circuits, the fault here are very regular, the structure is very regular in nature. So, faults are generally stuck at 0, stuck at 1, they are already there, but along with that there are several other stuffs. Like one cell can be in having interface uh, can, can having interference problem with some other cells. So, the other neighboring cells may dominate on that one, two cells may be there, one cell may have, may have dominating effect on the other and so forth. So, and, and one uh, these are all the problems of memory testing, but what is the ease of memory testing? The ease of memory testing compared to sequential and combination circuits is that in case of sequential and combination circuits, you have to sensitize the fault, propagate the value to the output and so forth. So, you may add into inconsistency and all those things, but in case of memory we do not have to do anything. You have to just write something in the cell and read something in the cell. So, the question of propagating, sensitizing, justifying all those complex do not come into picture at all. So, you just sensitize the fault um, that is you write a, write a 0 and a 1 in the respective cells you require, read them back and your job is done. So, although the fault models are a bit complex over here, but the way to generate the test pattern applying them is much more easier compared to other combination and sequential circuits. So, that we have already seen. So, now in today's class uh, we are on lecture 4, what we will see that how can you test the memory blocks or memory chips by using the philosophy that the cells have to be written into some values and you have to get a read them back and that is it and that will be done in a sequential manner or some manner as we will see and that should be done in a proper way. So, if that can be done then you can say that the chip is normal or fault and as the as a whole the chip may not be having uh, may have some uh, rows which are defective or same which are having defect. So, after wise there are some redundant cells. So, if you have a 1 GB memory kind of a stuff, so you will have more than that and the uh, the faulty rows or the faulty cells are bypassed and the normal or redundant from normal rows or normal cells from the redundant parts are brought in place of those faulty parts by, uh, by by some switching mechanism and the switches uh, switch fuses are blown by some laser technology or some other technology that is the idea. So, today we will see what is the most important thing which is called the MARS test which is the I mean term known as the MARS test which is applied which is widely used for memory testing there are several others, but we are actually looking for the MARS test. So, MARS test basically involve applying writing and reading patterns to each cell in the memory block uh, before proceeding to this next cell and if a specific pattern is applied to happen, then this is the idea. So, that is basic idea of uh, uh, MARS testing is that you read and write patterns in each cell uh, before proceeding to the next cell in a uh, predefined manner that is what is the idea. So, either you go in increasing order of the memory order or you go in the decreasing order, either you go from 0 to 2 to the power n memory location or you from you come down from 2 to the power n to 0 and you apply some specific pattern if required in a particular order. Like you may be writing 0 0 0 0 0 then you may be writing 1 1 1 1 1 and so forth or you may be doing 0 1 0 1 0 1 something like that. So, that is actually a specific pattern may also be required to be applied in one cell then it may be applied to other cells and so forth, but the basic idea is that you go this way you go come this way and you either apply all zeros then all ones or you can do it in an alternative way, there can be some specific patterns also. So, that is the basic idea of mass test that you go from one direction then you come back in another direction keep on applying some specific patterns whatever is required to the cell and read them back. So, mass test basically involves the following in increasing order. So, you take the very standard definition we go up and come down. So, in increasing order of, mem of memory address write zeros in this cell. So, the first job this is the very preliminary idea of mass test there can be I mean say, say some different complex versions. So, what you do you keep on writing zeros from 
top to bottom. Then in decreasing order of the cells, read the cells and write one to the cells. Now, what you do? You from top you come down and you read each of the cell. Their expected value is to be zero because already you have written zero, so you should write read a zero and you write a one. You read a zero when it is successful, you write a one. Now, what do you do? So this way you have done. Now again you go up. Now in increasing order of the cells, read the cell values. Expected value is one because we have written one. Write zero to the cells and then again repeat it. So let us see this in a pictorial manner. So initially this is your memory content. So this will always be the content in this way nothing is there, the arbitrary values are there. So, you go assume that our memory cells have 0 to 9 I mean uh, cells. So, then it is in the order of 2, but for the sake of simplicity of taking from 0 to 9. So, what you do? You just uh, keep on writing a zeros in all the cells. So, you can write a 0. Okay, now, what do you do? So, now you come down address from 9 to 0 and you read a 0 because already 0 was written. So, you should be you read the value. So, it should be a 0. If a 0 that means you write 0 was successful and read 0 is also successful. Now, keep on writing a 1. Now, what do you do? Now, again you come down. Now, again you read this cell. So, initially this cell was a 1 because it was a 1 in the previous step. You read 1, you get a 1, then you are very happy that you have written a 1 and you could read a 1 also. Now, again write a 0 and keep on doing it. Read 1, erase it, write 0 and so forth. Now, again you come down and you should expect to get a 0. At this stage you do not write anything. I mean just you keep on getting a 0. So, this is what is the basically memory mass test for memory. So, you go up, write all zeros, come down, read 0 successfully write a 1, go up, read zeros 1 successfully, write zeros and you come down and read all zeros successfully. This is the very basic idea of our memory test, the mass test based memory uh, for memories. Now, what we will see is that next that how this test which are the fault models, faults in the fault models as you have already seen are covered by this and which are the fault models which, which, uh, which are not covered by the mass test. So, that we have to twist our idea a bit. So, that is what we are going to see, but this is the very basic idea of mass test. Now, we will see which faults are fault models are covered by this and so we will also see how the models are not covered by this. So, we will see I mean uh, then what some, some, some changes we have to do. So, what is the idea for the stack at 0 and stack at 1 fault model. So, you see very easily we can see that stack at 0 and stack at 1 faults are covered by this test. So, you write a zeros in all the cells done. Now, you keep on reading all these cells from back. Okay. So, you are reading it back that this is 0 fine. So, you are writing a 1, you read 0 fine, write a 1 and so forth. That means what? There is no stack at 1 fault in the memory that is not possible. That is done. So, now, what do you do? In the second step, what you have done? Say, you have written all 1s. Okay. Uh, so, you know the, so you know that because you are successfully reading a 0 and writing a 1. So, you can be very, very sure that there is a no stack at 1 fault in the memory. Now, next uh, the next step what you have done? Uh, you have now once now in this step what you do. So, this assures that there is no stack at 1 fault in the no stack at 1 fault because you could read a 0 from all these cells. Now, what you have done here? Now, when you are going here you are reading a 1 writing a 0 reading a 1 writing a 0 that means what there cannot be any stack at 0 fault here because you were able to write 1 here and read 1. Obviously, mass test actually does successfully all the stack at 0 and stack at 1 faults. Now, we will see the transition faults. So, what are the transition faults? Transition faults are nothing but you should be able to go from 0 to 1 and you should be able to go from 1 to 0. That is what is the idea. So, in this is what is defined. Now, let us see how it is successful. So, what we are doing here? So, in the first step you will see oh, we are already writing all zeros. Next step what we are doing? We are reading a 0 correct and writing a 1 reading a 0 writing a 1 reading a 0 writing a 1 okay that is what we are doing now here what are we are doing we are reading a 1 writing a 0 that means what so you are re reading a 0 here so reading a 1 here writing a 0 here that means what I, I, here what is first step was all these stuffs were 0 now you are reading a 0 here that means successfully 0 was written here now you are writing a 1 done now in this step you are reading a 1 that means what this 0 to 1 transition was successful so if you read all ones here and you are writing 0 of course, but you are writing a reading a 0. So, you are uh, reading a 0 here, writing a 1 here and reading back the 1s here. That means what successfully you could go for 0 to 1 in all the case. So, a rising transitive fault or ra ra so what do you call the rising transition fault is not there. So, this is actually the rising transition fault that is not present in any cell that you can guarantee. Okay, now, let us see the other way the I mean 1 to 0 this falling transition fault is also not there that can also be assured. So, let us see that yeah, how is it possible by mass test. So, now in this case you can see. Uh, so, now uh, so this was uh, this was about this one. So, here actually we are reading a 1 writing a 0 reading a 1 writing a 0 reading a 1 writing a 0 dot 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 reading a 1 writing a 0. Now, in this case what you are doing. So, 
again you are reading a 0, reading a 0, reading a 0 and so forth. So, what you have done essentially? You are reading a 0, writing a 0, again reading back a 0. That means, what these two step actually the fa uh, fault transition you have made and here you have verified. So, reading a 1, writing a 0 and reading back the 0 is guaranteeing that there is no uh, what you call fault transition fault. So, rising transition fault and fault uh, down transition faults are also I mean you can test it very well. So, mass test actually takes full care of stuck at 1, stuck at 0 faults and transition faults. Now, we will see coupling fault. Do mass test cover coupling faults? The answer is actually no. So, that you will be very surprised to know that that mass for mass test can very easily go on for testing the transition faults as well as your uh, what you can call the stuck at 0, stuck at 1 fault. But mass test as of as of now, I mean whatever we have discussed a very raw form does not cover coupling faults. Let us see why. Mass test cannot handle coupling faults. Now, how is it that? So, you just take 3 cells i, j and k, the routine is i is lowest, j is this is the order of the memory cell location. So, in mass test as we go sequentially, so we will go this way and we will come down this way that is what is the idea. So, now we will see that the coupling fault cannot be detected by mass test, I mean what is the idea. So, what is the coupling cell? So, i is coupled with j and i is also coupled with k, it is coupled with both. Okay. So, this is the coupling cell, coupled cell f is the coupled cell. So, fault will occur here and j and k are the dominating cells. That means, this guy will control I mean f and will cause fault over there. So, what, are, what is the fault? This is the fault. So, whenever there is a rise in cell k or j that is from 0 to 1, then there will be a problem that f there will be a swing in I. So, that is the wall that is written over here. Okay. So, there is when if there is a change from 0 to 1 in cell j, there will be a change in f that is a just swing and from this from k also. Right? So, that is what is the phenomena, that is what is the cell we are fault we are taking and we will see that mass test cannot detect this fault. Now, what is that? So, as you know in mass test we write all the cells as zeros done. Now, what you do in the first this is up and when you are going down, so you change k from read 0 successfully write a 1. So, when it is done, so this as a fault is there, f is a coupled cell, there will be a swing. So, it will be converted to 1. So, this one is corresponding to a swing over here. So, done. Now, if you could have directly read cell i, then you will could, you will read that there is a 1 in cell i, which is a wrong and you can detect a fault. But in mass test, we cannot do that, because we have to go in a sequential way. So, now next we come to this cell, read successfully a 0, write a 1. So, that is what? Again a rise over here from 0 to 1, right? So, now again there will be a swing over here. Now, what will be the swing? The swing will be from a 1 to 0 which corresponds to this transition. And when you will be reading cell 0, you will find a read 0 successful and you can write a 1 over here. So, even if there was a coupling fault between this, you could not, you cannot detect it. So, there was actually a fault masking. So, what are the fault masks? J, K and I was coupled, change in I, change in K from 0 to 1 that is rising flip x. Now, when there was again a flip in J from 0 to 1, again I was again flipped and it was made correct. So, the fault could not be detected, there was a mask. So, we could see that coupling faults cannot be detected by mass test. So, that is the problem because of this uh, interrelation between these three things. But if you could have first applied the cell here and then you could have checked here, then your job would have been done. That is you go for a 0 to 1 kind of a you read 0, write 1, then directly check here. So, you will get a 1 and you can detect. But as mass test goes in this sequential and this sequential order, so you, you have failed in doing that. So, uh, that one is a that one is one of the very big problem of mass test that we could not handle coupling or say, coupling faults in this because we are traversing in this order. But if we could have I mean if we could somehow bypass this uh, what you call sequential traversal manner then something can be so that we will see later. So, as of now the conclusion is that mass test cannot I mean handle coupling faults. Okay. So, that is what the whatever I was discussing in this cell in this one are ri rising uh, in inversion rising that inversion coupling fault between i and k mask this fault that is uh, the fault between this i and k that is the fault between i and k is, ma is actually masking the fault between i and j. So, whatever I discussed so it has been written in this. Cell. So, in other words we are we were not successful in doing it. Okay. So, uh, now we see I mean how we can help actually. So, that is what I mean we found out that that was actually a big problem because of the sequential traversal we could not do that. So, now we have to see that how we how the problem can be solved. So, let us see that. So, inverse inverse rising coupling fault. So, in this case what there is a, if there is a cell from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 traversal if it is there, if this is the cell k say and if it is the cell i say. So, there is actually a swing over here. So, this is the uh, no, cell dominating cell I mean all the coupling cell and this is the coupled cell where fault is there this is i. So, now what you can do? Uh, cell j is to be a written. So, so, what I have to how to do the test? So, you read a write a 0 over here, cell 0 is to be between the 0 and read back, fine. Then cell i is to be read and remembered. So, whatever is the value, so you write a 0 in k and remember whatever is the value. So, you know that it is x, let us assume that it is x 0 or 1, anything is possible and read back. Then you read back and remember. Now, cell j is to be written with a 1 
and it should be read back successfully you are done and then again you read back this value of cell x sorry cell i and the value should be same that it should not be x inversion so this should be remembered and no inversion should have been done so if it is the case then you know that there is inversing rising coupling fault between cell i and j is not there, that you can assure so basically what we have done so we have done a very simple logic so we have if you see what we have done so basically we have not done anything as which I was discussing that is same thing we have done. So we have written a 0 verified it we have written a 1 over here sorry we wrote a 0 over here read the value of i over here whatever may be the case is 0 whatever may be the case then you write a 1 over here and read back 1. So that is you have uh, su successfully gone for a rising point here then you are reading back the value of cell i. So it should remain 0 it should not become 1. So in this case if you have done you could have solved this this fault. But essentially what we have done we have only also done mass test in this case we have not done anything else. But with the modified mass test in which case we have not gone in a sequential way. We have traversed if they sell i and j are coupled and coupling effect. So, we go for i and j in one shot one after another even if there may be more cells in between i and j. Similarly, for the inverse coupling fault you can do the same thing. So, for this is cell i say this is cell j say this is the for normal cell this is the coupled cell fault causing. So, here actually you write a value of a 1 one here read back then you read the value of i that is x less than x cell c is to be written with a 0 write a 0. So, there is a fault transition you have done and you have to again read back 0 and same thing you assure that i j is to be written with 0 and read back you write a 0 in j verify that 0 is there. So, you verify that the down transition here again read back i and there should not be an x inversion. So, uh, then you can veri in verify that inverter and co inversion coupling fault is not there. So, actually again what we have done we have basically done we have traversed i and j even if there may be lot of other cells in between we have seen done the testing one of for another in this consecutive I mean we have done access i and j consecutively even if there are many other cells in between by doing this simple idea we can use mass test for coupling faults. So, similarly I mean by the same that but the same philosophy so that coupling affect faults cannot be handled handled by raw uh, mass test now why is that because in mass test you go this way and you go this way. So, if there is some fault i and fault j fault l and fault f something like this. So, if these two are getting a coupling effect and these two are having a coupling effect kind of a thing sorry one example is fine. So, these two are having a coupling effect. So, there may be more lot of cells in between. So, if you are I mean uh, doing something with this cell then you apply something with this cell then what happened that it may have a masking effect as we have shown in the example. But if you apply something read something again apply something here read something and that is you jump in between these two then there is no effect actually of I mean in intermediate cells effect do not come into picture and you can detect if there is any kind of a fault over there. So, that, that that can be very easily done. So, the idea here is that somehow you have to bypass this uh, cells which lie between i and j. So, that your job is actually done. So, that is the idea. So, now simply you can see that rising uh, independent rising coupling fault that is if there is a rising from uh, this is a cell i cell j. So, if there is a rising over here you will get a 0 in the coupled cell that should not be the, the case. So, you have to verify you write a cell is to be written with a 0 and read back then you write a 1 in cell j read back correct and uh, cell is written and read back ok and ok. So, cell j is to be written with a 0 and read back then you write a 1 over here and read back then you cell j is to be written with a 1 read back that is the rising transition you have done and then you read again cell i. So, obviously, it should be a 1 then it is done. So, similarly, if you want to go for this uh, independent rising one fault then what you do you write a 0 over here, here read it may write a read, write a 0 in i read it ok ok and then cell j is to be uh, written with a 1 this case. So, that you get a rising transition over here and read back the value of cell i 0. So, if it is the case so we know that this fault is not there. So, it is very simple. So, idea is that now just instead of and you have to remember that i and j are non consecutive that may not be consecutive lot of memory cells are there but we traverse these two points. So, by this simple logic you can go for this test. Similarly, for indian potent for falling uh, coupling fault and indian potent falling one coupling fault. So, this is again very simple this is i this is j. So, it is a falling. So, first you have to write a 1 over here, you have to write a uh, 0 over here and read back, then you have to write a 0 over here, write read back. So, fall is done. You can go back and check that it is a sorry, in, it should be a 1. So, write a 1 and uh, read back 1. 
sorry, it's a 1, read back 1, it should be a 1, in this case it is done. Similarly, if you want to go for this one, so it is a following this thing, so you write a 1 over here, write a 0 over here, then write a 0 over here, read back. So, now in this case again fall is assured, now again you go back and check whether 0 is there, if 0 is there, then this fault is not there, I mean this fault is not there, because this fault actually says that whenever there is a fall here, in this case you will not get a 0 in I, you will get a 1 in. So, a very simple idea, by this theme, by the simple technique of I mean uh, first uh, writing j and this is I, first writing a value of 1. So, if you are looking for this type of a fault, then uh, you write a 1 over here and if you want to go for checking rising fault, kind of you write a 0 and whatever if you want to test for a one fault here, so you write a 0, if you want to test for a 0 fault here, you write a 1, then again I mean if it is a uh, 0 you write and read over here. So, you are checking for this one, you write a 1 if you are checking for this one, read back this if you want to check for this, read back this if you want to check for this fault. Very simple and uh, just a very, very simple idea. Only you have to note that there are lot of cells in between them and we are going about this way. Again for the bridging fault. Now, let us come to the bridge fault and let us see whether uh, this mass test does ab exactly everything for that. Again, we can see that. So, there are we are taking the and bridging fault between two gates, I mean two, uh, two faults. So, you can see that 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, all the patterns have to be applied in between all the cells, right. So, that is the idea. So, any two cells can have a coupling effect. So, what is the idea you should have? for a bridging fault test. So, bridging fault test if you assume that we are actually saying uh, that we are considering only these two cells for bridging fault. So, you should have 0 0 that is fine, then you should have 1 1 that case is also fine, but at a time time you should also have a 0 1 and this is with your 1 0 this case should be there and this we will find verify that this these two combinations may not be possible that is 0 1 and 1 0 these two cases may not be possible or is not possible in our memory master if you go are going strictly in this and this and this fashion that may not be possible. So, just again as we have uh, modified mass test a best in, in, in case of coupling faults. So, here we will also do the same thing for the bridging faults. So, implies that cells I and which are in bridging fault must have the four combinations of this one. So, no cell pairs have all the four combinations that is true I mean for each n c 2 is the combination for e, I mean all pair of cells should have this combination 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 1 is a fine as I think we may find out that it may be there, but 0 1 and 1 0 may not be there. So, that you can verify and those some different tests are there. So, what you do is very simple idea again this is i this is j this is j so okay, these are bridging faults so both of them may have, a, have an effect so you write 0 read 0 write 0 read 0 and again go back so write uh, cell i and cell uh, read, write cell 0 in cell i 0 in cell j you write both of these things and read back the values which must remain similarly you write a 0 over here write a 1 over here and read back both both of them should be 0 and a 1 then you write a this is very simple idea write a 1 over here write a 0 over here and read back both the values it should be 1 0 similarly write a 1 here write a 1 here read back and both should be there both should be the same there should not be any kind of a chain okay so now you see so, that is what is what we are expecting. So, as you know that these are all the tests for and bridging faults and similarly they are all the tests for or bridging faults also, because or bridging fault and bridging fault whatever you take. So, so or bridging fault or and bridging faults whatever you take. So, you will just find out that they are 0 0 0 1. So, these are the only the four conditions which have to be applied either in and bridging fault or or bridging fault and what we are verifying that if you write 0 0 you should get back 0 0 if you are writing 0 1 you are going to get 0 1 if you are writing 1 0 you should get back the value 1 0 and 1 1. So, this is what is we are verifying in case of a bridging fault for and, but for or also you have to do the same thing only that the fault effect here will be bit different because in this case it will be 1 1, this case it will be 1 1 and this remains. So, we are actually just verifying if you know that what we are verifying in case of a bridging fault, we are verifying that that is whatever writing 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 they should remain as such. So, we are, we are not say, saying that what is the output whether it belongs to an and bridging fault or all bridging fault that we are not doing. We are verifying that we have written 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and they are retained and if they are retained our job is done. So, okay, so obviously, if it is and bridging or all bridging, so both of them are tested by the same manner. Okay. So, that is what I mean by just by I mean uh, uh, these, are, these are all also you can call mass test, but only thing is that we are not going in a sequential manner from I to J because the I may be here, J may be here, there are a lot of intermediate cells in between. So, we are jumping between these two locations. So, that is what is the idea. Now, you see, now we come back to our uh, uh, what do you call this address decoder faults. So, what do you mean by the address decoder faults? So, uh, the address decoder faults, I mean as you already seen that your best architecture was 
yeah so this was our basic architecture so what we have seen so all the mass states and all the algorithm we are saying coupling fault uh, neighborhood pattern sensitive fault india important faults whatever are mainly looking at the memory cells and this is row decoder and column decoder so these two we have to test and already we have said that these two are basically nothing but some kind of combinational circuits so what we can go for socket 0 socket 1 and d algorithm and solve the problem but again you have to know that i mean we are not going to do that because it is not frequent because what is the job of row and column decoder are very much fixed that is whatever value you give you they access the corresponding memory cells. So, here what is the basic philosophy we will use that? We will use that say for row and decoder, column decoder you select this, then this, then this, then this and you go in a sequential, some kind of a sequential way and you read back 0, write 1, again read 0, write 1, all these things you do. So, I mean if these two things are operating properly, then at no point in time you will get any defect or any, any kind of erroneous responses from the memory cell like you see write a 0, then a 1, write a 0, then a 1 in some particular sequence you write in the particular cell order and again you read back. Right? Then, I mean, if your uh, memory uh, and you know that I have written 0 in 0, 0 is the first cell, first cell of this one, say you write written a second cell and so forth. So, you know that where you have written what? Now, again, you write everything, now again you start reading back. So, if, if this row decoder and column decoder are operating fine, so whenever you want to access the first cells, it will access this, whenever you want to do the second cell, it will do this. Never it will happen that you want to access these two and you are accessing this cell and getting erroneous data. So, there can be some aliasing, obviously, there can be some aliasing, but generally, I mean, it, it is found out that. So, if you are traversed, you have filled out in one order, then you come back and again fill up in other order. That is what. So, you are if you are getting every data correct, then you can be very much assured that there is no I uh, mean uh, of what you can call column or row decoder fault is there. I mean there is a very good high high chances are there because I mean obviously there can be a mask like for example, this is the first cell you have written a 1 and this cell is also a 1, you are accessing, you want to access this but instead you are ac you get access to this one. So, there is some probability is there that you may miss it, but by writing different type of patterns and reading it back and writing it all the ways. So, the probability can be made very high. So, there can be, we are not discussing how the probability is made high, but you can find out by reading the references given in the course. So, what you can do is that, what they have done is that they, they write different uh, sequence of patterns and you read back the data in a different, in a sequence, write in a sequential manner, read back in a sequential matter and uh, then if you get all the data correctly. So, not only your memory blocks are correct, you also assume that your row and decoder blocks basically which are accessing the corresponding uh, cells of the memory you require are also operating fine. And similarly like uh, this driver and sense amplifiers are analog circuit, we do not write uh, test them separately. The idea is that you write, you read something from this one. So, I mean if you are able to read every value, every bit correctly, then the idea is that the sense amplifiers are working properly. Here you are writing something and again reading it back. So, if you are able to write and read back, that means what? Your driver cells are also working fine. So, that is the basic philosophy we will use, whether we are not going to use some kind of analog test techniques to do these blocks. Okay? So, so, that is with this philosophy we will see how memory, I mean what you call, call this mass test or that different forms of mass test can do the address decoder test. Okay. So, you see a little variation of mass test can test all the four address decoder faults which you have seen. What were the four types like you should not get access to a wrong memory cell. So, I mean you should not get, I mean you, you should not happen that one address is accessing two memory cells. It should not happen that one ad address is accessing nothing. It should not happen that you write, a, you, you get some other kind of coupling effects and so forth. All the four models we have seen, but the idea, the, in fact the idea was that whatever cell you want to get, that value should come up. It should not be happen that you want to access cell x, you are getting the value of y. Similarly, it should not happen that you are accessing x, you get the values from x and y both. All these things should not happen. So, I mean the idea is that if you can access something properly, read and write back properly whole memory cell, then it is very, very high probability that as, as row and address decoder and read and write driver cells are working fine. That is the basic idea. So, what they do in increasing order of address of the memory cells, read the value of the memory cell and write the complement of the cell. If a 1 is read, write a 0, if, uh, is 0 following that the same procedure is followed for cell 2 and this one. So, if 1 is read at cell 0, the value of 1 is written to cell 0, just to do the reverse and that. In decreasing order of the memory cells, read expect the value and the complement of the cell, right. Like for example, a very simple idea like for example, if you have 0, 0, 0, right, you read 0, write 1. So, let us also not take 0, 0, 0, let us take the memory cell is written something like that 1, 0, 1, 1, something like that. These are the four memory cells you assume. Then what you do? You first read 1, write a 0, then 0, you write a 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, you do that. Again you read back 0, 0, 1, 0. So, the here the idea is that if you can do that successfully, then the idea is that I mean you are accessing the proper cell, right. If like for example, you have one was there, you invert it and so that after when you access this proper cell, you should get the value of a 0 itself. So, I mean by chance if there is a problem that I mean uh, if this cell was there, 
and you are by, by chance you want to access the last cell but by chance if you are accessing this cell so you will get the value of 1 and you can find out then the address equal to 1. But obviously there is some kind of aliasing effects also like for example if you are wanting to accessing this cell now you come and access this cell then what can happen is that you can find that it is 0 ok so it may be a proper thing so it is correct and you may find out that there is no address decoder fault but in fact instead of accessing this you are getting access to this one. But now again it can be very easily changed be very easily checked but by, by if, if you are I mean, uh, so this is a problem between this first and the cells. So you can just take two different values. I mean, that I told you, you apply different values. So now in this case is one 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 zero sign something like that. So the different patterns you are checking. So you, it will become zero 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 one. Now if you read this one and you are getting the answer to this one, then you can find out the address decoder fault over here. So that is what I am saying. The idea is that you do this complement and try one or two different patterns. So what you are going to find out that by using a proper number of patterns and prop in proper sequence, you can find out that the uh, even the aliasing effect of address decoder fault testing will be minimized. So, I mean uh, the basic principle is that the memory writing and examination operation moves through the memory. Any address decoder fault that expects cause unexpected access of memory location will cause the location written an unexpected value. The, as the trace proceeds, it will discover those fault equation and report a fault file, I mean report a bug file. So, the idea is that you write something, read something in different, different patterns and in a sequential manner. So, that I mean I, I, whatever cell you want to read, if you are not able to get the value from that cell or you are getting value from some other cell, it will be eventually caught. So, that is the basic idea of address decoder. Fault. We are not explicitly testing whether I mean that is that, that the address decoder fault, I mean whether there is a problem in address decoder as a combinational circuit or a sequential circuit kind of a thing. So, that is the idea. Now, as I told you, now we come to another paradigm that is called basics of memory based, that is memory based. Now, why do you require memory based? So, what is the idea of based as we already discussed? So, the basic idea of based was, was that if there is a chip which is in the market, it was having some no faults, you tested it using an ATE, everything was done properly. Now, you have shifted to the market. Now, in the market, I mean nowadays as things are in the very deep submicron and lot of I mean, heating effects, all the effects are there. So, now the chip may have a problem when the circuit is on, what is in is operating online. Online, I mean the idea is when it is in your system. Now, what do you do with that? So, one thing is that you say that there is a problem. So, again you have to debug it, find out where is the problem, send the chip, I mean send it to the customer, I mean what you call, comp send it to the, I mean, I mean, uh, AT that is the workstation where the, wherever the test facility is there and the long procedure which is causing a lot of problems in your life. So, in this case what we have seen that we put a built in self test circuit that will at every time your circuit starts it will have a hardware pattern generator inside. So, it is a LFSR which will generate some patterns, it will find out if there is a fault, so there is a signature compression, it will find out if there is a fault, it will find out that okay this chip is having a problem. So, that report you can easily find out, so you just put the tester then a very handheld, very small tester. So, whenever you start up your system like your mobile phone or your laptop, so it will say that this chip is having a problem that is because that chip has reported a BIST error and your circuit system stops working. So, immediately you know that okay, this chip is not operating, you take the system to a very, even a local then that he will replace the chip and you, you, the things will start working. That we have already discussed on elaborate discussion on best. So, now as we told you that combination circuit or sequential circuit as such, the yield is quite ok kind of a thing like 60 to 70 percent. So, more or less the chips are fine, but in case of memory we have found out that every time every chip you sell more or less there can be some problems in the memory cells because they are very compact, very near to each other, lot of faults can be possible. So, now what do you do? That is a big problem. So, now what you have to do? So, what, what is the basic idea? How can you solve the problem? To solve the problem what you have to do is that you should have a BIST there because memory is more complex than a combination or a sequential circuit. So, the idea is that if, if, if BIST is required for combination or sequential circuit, the more complex and error where faults are probable or there can be lot of issues. So, BIST is even more mandatory over there, is more required to have a BIST in memory. So, all memory chips have BIST. Now, in case of uh, combination sequences, okay, if the BIST circuit reports an error, what you will do? You will simply say that there is a problem over here. So, just uh, you flag out an error saying that is a problem. So, you have to replace the chip. But in case of memory, it is not that. So, you can what you can do if you have a very advanced what you can call I mean relocation or I mean uh, changing of the faulty chips procedure on circuit just like I tell you an example. Say for example, you have fabricated 1 GB memory, now you have some always some redundant cells because I told you some chips may be some source rows may be faulty. So, what you have to do? You have to sometimes by bypass 
these faulty faulty cells and so that you can get an access to the uh, when it can be so that you can the faulty cells can be bypassed so that instead of the faulty cells you can access some redundant or extra normal circuit. So, that bypassing arrangement is done by multiplexer by blowing out some switch fuses. But now say the on chip while the on situ while the memory is operating so it can some of the cells can go back. Now, the best will capture that because that is why it is very much mandatory or very much required to have a best in a uh, memory testing circuit or a memory chip. Now, your best will sense that okay there is a problem here so you have to do something. Now, what you can do? Now, you cannot simply throw off the chip say that the memory chip is wrong. So, you throw off this, this cannot be done because in every say one week or two week or every 10 weeks or I mean should not call week in every six months or seven months or some frequency higher frequency will have some cells of the memory which is getting damaged that may very easily happen because of the architecture of the memory. Now, the beast will have to detect as well as diagnose this. So, that is not only enough say for example, if you have a memory like this and your this part is gone bad that you have found out in base. Now, what you can do you can actually you cannot know you should not be able to access this cells that is the idea. So, now how, what do you have to do? So, whenever your means uh, sir, some program or something is trying to access this cell you should actually bypass that to another part of the memory that is that bypass routine or that bypass mechanism has should also be present that can be done on C2 that is by blowing off some fuse and all you can do a bypass, but there are also some separate mechanisms also possible which are we are not discussing because they are advanced memory repairing techniques are there. So, even if the beast detects there is an error, so uh, these or these cells are not operating fine. So, what you do you take this one from here put the redundant cells and again you connect it back. So, these are just a bypass mechanism. So, physically these cells are here, but logically they will be connected to some other parts of the cells and internally there should be a mapping of the memory locations from here to the redundant cell. So, the very sophisticated idea, but this thing has to be done and say uh, and say you are using the memory chip for 1 year, 2 year. So, after some time you will find out that these extra cells have exhausted. Now, then what will happen? Then you will not get a 1 GB full memory even if you have purchased the RAM chip of 1 GB. So, after a long time of use you may find out that uh, affected memory is some 900 MB or something like that. You may not get a GB of memory. Now, why is that possible? Why that is done? Because your extra cells are over and after all the extra cells have been exhausted. So, even if now there is a fault over here. So, what you can do is like something like this. So, even if you have a fault over here. So, you have you have to just bypass this and you have to do here. So, this is none, there is no guy here to replace this because these extra cells have also been exhausted. So, the only thing is that you have to assure that you cannot access this cells by any means because if you write or read something there is a prone that you may not be able to retract back the data. So, if there is some access to that has to be again bypassed from here to here, but as there is no more extra cells. So, I mean no more redundant cells, so you cannot do the repairing. So, that is why if you are using a RAM cell for a long time just go in your computer my, my computer just see the properties of your RAM main memory. You find out that if you have purchased a 4 GB memory or 2 GB memory in your machine now it is much less than that and this is because of this, but still your chip is working. That means, some part of the memory has gone bad, but internally your memory based and repairing architecture has been such. So, that your programs are not accessing those problems not accessing those stuff. So, that is what has happened. Okay. So, we will not be going into this uh, uh, this elaborate discussion on how memory is repaired and all those things. So, rather what we will do? We will see how memory BIST can be done. We will see the BIST architecture for memory that is how we can detect or diagnose the faults that which in which cell there is a problem that we are going to look into. Okay, and further how, how the beast will look like. Okay, so, again like as you already seen there are two type of uh, LFSR modular LFSR standard LFSR. The same thing will be also used from this one, but and we have also seen that if you have a prime, what you call a primitive polynomial. So, you can generate sequence from 1 to dot 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 1 3 something something this can be an arbitrary fashion and finally, we will get the answer till 2 to the power n minus 1. So, you can start from 1 to the 1 say 7 9 dot 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 2 to the power n minus 1. So, that sequences of patterns can be generated, but uh, the sequence may not be in a are in a random fashion it depends on the seed you apply. Now, one very important thing uh, basically two there, there are two philosophical again two, two philosophical differences from the best of normal sequential and combinational circuits compared to memory. So, in case of sequential circuits if you remember or combinational circuits we do you cannot generate all 0 patterns in a standard or modular LFS that was not required also because I mean if one I mean there may be very very less probability that if the all 0 patterns are not applied then there will be a very huge number of faults that will not remain tested that may not that may not the case then in, in the general general circuit maybe one or two faults can be lost, but this is not a very general case. So, in that way 
So that was not causing a very big problem for us. But in case of memory, if you remember that all 0 is a very, very important pattern because the first memory location is 0 and from there you go to 2 to the power n minus 1 or n or whatever. So, the first location is a 0. So, all 0 location has to be have that is a very, very important parameter that is one. Second thing is that if you remember uh, Mars test or some test. So, actually what we do? We go in some order and you come back in some order. So, that is the basic I mean. So, ba basic fault, uh, fault test models if you remember we have seen is that uh, stuck at fault uh, and transition fault similarly uh, coupling faults okay all the cup different type of coupling faults are there so i mean a very similar way we have not discussed here but you can find out that uh, this uh, neighborhood pattern sensitive faults can also be very easily tested by mars test kind of a thing so that is very simple like so if you are taking this kind of a thing so if you have a uh, 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 so if you if you know that uh, the fault is such like something like this so the fault is such like if all zeros are there near about sorry we may not consider this so, any, any fault model, any neighborhood pattern you can take this type 1 neighborhood. So, if all those things are 0, then from 1 to 0 you cannot have kind of a fault like 0, 0, 0, 0, then this thing if you are going to do. So, you always get a stuck 0 kind here. So, if you want to do that, so very, very, very simple you just put uh, write 0, read 0, write 0, read 0, write 0, read 0 in all the nearby cells which ever required. You write a 1 over here, make a 0 and read back whether the 0 is possible. Just like all the coupling faults, I mean, neighborhood I mean, pattern sensitive faults can also be tested in a very similar manner in like uh, in by using mass test. Only thing is that again, I mean this memory locations may not be in sequential in nature. So, you have to access this, access this, access this, access this and access this. So, that idea is that accepting stuck at faults and uh, what do you call this uh, transi transition faults for all other coupling faults uh, like uh, neighborhood pattern sensitive faults, ma uh, bridging faults, uh, address decoder faults may be all faults you require to have a mass test, but the order of access of the memory cells will not be sequential. So, okay, but for uh, transit is the transition faults and stuck at faults. What is the idea? You go in this way and you go in this way. So, the very, very, very basic requirement of uh, I mean memory cells, if you say that, I want to do the very basic requirement testing because B has lot of time constraints, area constraints, so forth. So, if somebody says that, okay, I have to do only this very preliminary test, that is, stuck at fault and transition fault, because they are very simple. You apply this order, you apply this order, nothing you have to remember, you have to keep on going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, uh, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, that is it. And you have to write 0, read 1, write 0, read 1, your job is done. But if you are going for coupling for level pattern sensitive faults, then the order of access of the cells are also very, very important. So, if you have to remember the order of access of the cells, that is some pattern you have to remember. And already we have seen that remembering pattern is very, very difficult in case of best. Because if you want to remember patterns, then you have to go for a fairness state machine design in a digital, I mean, like standard digital design way. And that has to be a lot of state minimization and the area will be huge. So, but if you have to, if you can go in an arbitrary pattern like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and come back, that also requires a very huge amount of area over it, but it is much less than if you want to go in a predetermined manner, predetermined manner makes, makes, makes the thing area over a bit higher. But what is the easiest? You can, if you can go 1, 7, 9, 6, 3, 4, 2, 1, again, again come back in some random way. So, if you can traverse the cells in some very random nature, then the area over it will be very, very less. So, that is the thing we will be using. Like, let like, like, me tell you the philosophy again. So, we want a memory based. So, again, if it's best idea, if you want to do all the tests in memory, so you have to go for very sequentially, that is, if the two cells are having a coupling fault, then those, those two cells should be accessed one after another, writing 0, reading 1, and so forth. So, if you want to do pattern sensitive fault for uh, neighborhood cells, then you have to go for 1, 2, 4, 1, uh, 0, 1, 3, 4, something like that. So, this acts particular order of cells have to be accessed, read are written 0, write a 1, all those things have to go. That is in other words, you have to access the cells in a very predefined manner. That is going to be a big problem because already we have seen that if you want to apply patterns from a, any standard pattern generator, which will actually in this case will generate the address of the cells in a predefined manner, is very difficult because of the area over it. Next level, so it is very difficult to do all kinds of tests using a uh, BIST in memory because of the area over it. And no, very operate. Now, if you want to say the next level is what? Next level is actually your stack at false and transit default minimum. So, for that what you have to go? You have to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and say come back. This is also possible, but again as you are going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but still there is some sequence because ascending order, descending order, you have to remember something. That will also kill you in the area of the base. That is also going to be a very killing factor. So, what the idea they are going to do is that we will access cells in a very random manner. Like we can go for 0, 3, 7, 9, dot, 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 all, all patterns will cover 1 and something like that. And again, we will follow back 1, 9, 7, 3, 0, but it is a very random in nature. So, if you say that, then you can say that what I will do is that I will use a non, 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 normal LFSR, because LFSRs can generate the values of any in a random, a random manner depending on the value of the initial C. 
So, that is why when you are going for random based, so memory based, so what we are going to use? We are going to use mass test and we will basically test only for this uh, what do you call this stuck at fault and transitive faults. Also, by advanced I mean technology, I mean by, by advanced studies, uh, advanced I mean work on this one have shown that if you go for transition fault as well as for stuck at fault, some of the bridging faults. Like I mean, you may not have all the sequence like 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. All patterns may not be possible, but at least 0, 0 and 1, 1 patterns will be possible. Something like this. So some of the patterns may be possible. Similarly, for the coupling faults, for the never pattern sensitive faults, not all the patterns are maybe sensitized, but few of them will be done. So I mean, you can get a pretty good feeling there whether your memory is operating fine or not. So, what we are done? The basic philosophy is that we will not go in a sequential manner. We will go in any arbitrary order without loss in test capability for the stack at first and the transitive point. Like you apply 0 first, first location, second location, fifth location, seven level, like this one 0, 1, 0, 2, 5, 7, this one, and in that descending order 1, 8, 9, this one. So, you are just doing in a reverse order, these are very random in nature. They will be depending on your uh, LFSR design and your feedback, I mean, and your seed. So, if you do this, you have already seen, we require just a few XOR gates which will do the job for you. So, that is what is the philosophy we will be using for memory based. We will go for a uh, ma simple mass test, okay, and that is mainly we will cover single stacket, stacket faults and uh, what you call transi transition faults, and a few fraction of the uh, some other faults, I mean, which are not discussing, but generally, if you are, uh, have time, you can read to the references. They shows that they will also cover few of the other faults, some percentage of them. And we need not go for a very sequential matter. We will do 1, then 3, then 7, then 9. And obviously, this does not lead to any compromise in test capability because in case of mass test also, what we do is that in mass test for stacked faults and transition faults, there is no coupling effect. So, each individual cell we study in a different way, like one cell we write 0, read 0, write 1, read 0, and so forth. For each cell, we verify independently, irrespective of others. So, there is no need to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can go in the arbitrary order. So, that is what we are going to apply over this and we will see how it is done. So, I mean what is the basic difference between uh, this memory memory beast architecture LFSR and which is your standard which you have discussed in. So, this is the standard architecture. So, uh, which we have uh, module 11. So, in last module if you remember we have also discussed the standard architecture of a BIS for standard sequential and conventional circuits and we are, we are also modifying that one only for memory BIS. So, let us see what is the what is the modification required for this one. Okay. So, here actually if you look at th that architecture, so here actually we have reversed, so here we are using the standard LFSR, so because modular also can be designed, but we are not looking into that, but in this case the first thing is that we reverse this order. So, if you remember that, so here is to have x 0, x 1 and x 2, uh, and but now we have reversed the order. So, what we have done? We have reversed the order, this is the first thing and in the feedback, we have in the if you remember the other case. So, we may have a feedback from here, then we may have a feedback from here, then we may also have a feedback from here. There is no NAND gate or something like this, but here we have introduced one NAND gate over here also. Okay, so, in this case there are two difference. So, one thing is this this was x 0, x 0, x 0 here x 1 and x 2 over in the standard case of sequential and combinational circuit there is normal LFSR for normal circuits and for memory this is reversed and we have put one uh, extra NAND gate. So, now why an extra NAND gate you will find out uh, sorry NOR gate this NOR gate why because we have to get the all 0 patterns that is very very important. Okay. So, there are the two things because of this extra x or x nor gate combination. So, we will get the all 0 pattern which was not possible in case of this uh, in standard LFSR or modular LFSR for normal I mean general circuits. Like if you remember that, so if you know if this the feedback was like this. So, if you have a 0 over here, if you have a 0 over here, if you have a 0 over that is the output of all the flip flops are 0. So, x or 0 and 0. So, it will be stuck at that all 0. So, we have already seen that. To avoid that, we have used this one. Let us see how it is done. Okay. So, let us have the seed like x 0 is equal to to 0, this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 1. So, let this be the current seed. Okay. And in case of our standard, I mean normal LFSR for normal kind of a circuit, we remember that we may have to go here and stop because we, these are maybe these are maybe the all the patterns which have which were enough to do all the testing for you. So, okay, so we could we, we actually we used to select the seed in such a fashion so that I mean all the important patterns of the testing get applied in the very first few iterations and this we can avoid from here we can reset back. But in case of memory it is not there, we have to apply all the patterns in a go that is from uh, all the patterns and because all the memory, memory location has to be accessed. So, all the patterns are required. So, we start with the 0 0 0 this is pretty standard seed over here. You start from location 1 then we will go back to location 0 because if you start I mean, we will, I mean if, if you use 0 as the seed I mean that also you can do, but generally idea is that we first use as all 1 the 0 1 seed then from there we go to zeros, and then again we progress in this manner and all the locations will be covered in this way. So, this is a pretty pretty standard seed in case of memory based, but in case of a normal circuit kind of a stuff like sequential and normal combinational circuits, 
general type of circuit. So, we, use the, we can use the pattern such that the important patterns will be applied first. Okay, now, it is done. So, let us see. So, we have applied the pattern 0 0 1. Now, in the next way, so you get a 1 over here, right? This is a 0 over here, this is a 0 over here. So, not 0 means it is a 1 over here. So, 1 and a 1 actually will make a 0 over here, right? So, it will be a 0 over here and a uh, 0 over here will actually convert a 0 over here. Right. So, now what is going to happen? The next clock plus 0 will be shifted over here, this 0 will be shifted over here, and this 0 will be shifted over here. So, we will get the all 0 patterns. Okay. Now, you see that how the all 0 patterns is used to get stuck in case of the LFSR for normal kind of a circuit, how it is not done here. So, if you just see that it is now all 0 patterns over here. So, now what is there? You get a 0 over here, you now this is a 0 over here, this is a 0 over here. If you remember, 0 and a 0, nor get 1, 1 0 you get the value of a 1, 1 1 it is a 1, and so again you get the value. So, now because of this gate arrangement, it is not stuck at 1. So, that is not stuck at 0, the all 0 pattern is not there. So, you get this pattern 0, 1, 0, 4, 6. So, it covers all the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 3 bits. So, all the 8 memory locations can be covered using this. So, just by using a simple NOR, X, NOR, NOR gate, your job is done. And these are very, very standard set. You start from 1 and do this. Now, again, Mars test is there. What we have seen that you apply some pattern in this order. Okay? You write 0, read 1, write 0, read back, and so forth. So, you keep on applying this here. Okay, now, what you have to do? You have to again traverse this, 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 and again read back and again write. So, what is very important in Mars test is that you write in it some random order, not a problem. But when you traverse back, then also again you have to get the same order in a reverse manner. That is very, very important. We write like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to say n. This is what is possible. We go in this way. Now, we come back in this way, we do that. Now, because of the sequential problem, the area may be higher. So, we are, allow, we are allowing to go arbitrary like 0, 4, 3, 7, 5, 2 something like that. But what you cannot forego is that once you have traversed this, now you have to again come back. So, while coming back, you cannot traverse it in an arbitrary manner like 3, 5, 7, 9, 12 because then you cannot remember anything. Okay, because we do not want to remember which cell we are accessing. We just want to remember that first cell, second cell, third cell, fourth cell, fifth cell, and again coming back will be 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. But now we are actually avoiding the sequentiality, strict sequentiality, because we reduce the area overhead of the LFSR. Okay, so now what do we do is that? So, but we, while turning back, it should be again 5, 2, 5, 3, 7, like this. It should be in the strict reverse order. So that we can know that this is the straight order, and while coming back, we are accessing the cells in a random manner, but the sequence is just reverse. So that is easy. you do not require to exactly remember what is there. Okay, so I mean if this is what the general case, so this is the reverse case. Okay, so that you have to do 0, 1 is the start point everywhere. So you know 0, 4, 6, 5, 2, so just reverse it, 2, 5, 3, 7, 6, 4. So this is what is the idea. So that because you are accessing, you are not accessing in a sequential manner, you are accessing in a random manner, but while coming back, this strict sequential this should be ordered. Okay, but then, then you will also see that it is very simple, easy to do that. So because already we have this LFSR, now we require another LFSR in combination with just a reverse of this. So what we have done? So in this case it was x0, x0, x0 1 x 2. So, in this case just we reverse it, you make x 2 x 1 x 0 and the connections are same way. In this one we use the x nor gate to avoid the all 0 cases and you can find out that here we will generate like if you have this as the seed like x 0 is the seed like so it will be a 1 0 0. If you have this seed you can easily very easily. So, now let us look at the memory beast architecture. So, what we have seen here? is that uh, th that in case of uh, memory based uh, the LFSR has size has to be smaller as in the case of the normal general kind of a circuit. So, what we are looking is that so memory based actually you see that in case of mass test we go for 0 1 2 3 4 up to n and then you can have to come back. Okay, so, this this reverse sequentiality the forward sequentiality and reverse sequentiality has to be made has to be there. That is very well understood like n n minus 1 dot dot 0, but now again if you have to go in a very sequential manner that may be a lot of problem for the area overhead of the address generator based for the best. So, what we can do is that just we have to just twist as I already discussed just twist the idea a bit. So, now instead of actually going from 0 1 2 3 4 dot dot what you can do is that you do it in a random manner you go for 2 5 7 9 3 like this. So, the idea here is that you generate the sequence all this obviously all sequence from 0 to 2 to the power n has to be generated, but now you do it in a random manner. So, that can be very easily done if you are using a uh, BIST architect BIST pattern generator like LFSR as we already discussed in the case of general circuits and 
So you can generate the patterns in a very random way depending on the seed. So now only there are some differences. I mean, because if you remember in case of uh, this general circuits, we have to generate. We don't require all zero patterns because very rarely the, the case it happens that all zero patterns is very much mandatory to detect a large number of pulses. That is not is not generally the case. So, but in case of a uh, memory beast, you have to always access the zeroth memory location. So zero pattern is very much required. And secondly, another philosophy is that so you are allowed to traverse. Say, for example, there are eight memory locations. So you are travel allowed to traverse in case of mass test like one zero four six seven three five. That is absolutely true. But now again, if you want to come back, so you cannot come back in another arbitrary fashion like five four three two one zero. Not like that. The idea is that in mass test you, you apply some sequence of pat some patterns in some sequence of memory cells. You don't remember in exact or exactly which memory cells you have written. That memory exact location you don't remember. What you do is that you access a cell, you write something, read something, and keep on doing it. And you, while you come back, you just remember that I am just traversing. These cells in a reverse way, in an exact order. So you don't have to remember the cell location, which is actually saving, doing a lot of saving in terms of computation. So that is what is that is what will be required when you are designing a memory based. That you are generating a order in a random fashion. That is fine because that random order generation is very simple using LFSR. But while traveling back, you have to exactly travel. Two, five, three, seven, six, four, zero, and one, something like that. You cannot have any other arbitrary order of traversal because if you do that, then you have to remember what you have written in what cell, and it will be horribly complex for us. So that is what. Now we'll see how that memory uh, cell can be designed. So there is actually a bit different. It's somewhat different from the standard LFSR or modular LFSR for general circuit. So what do we do? If you remember, in the that standard design for general circuit, it was x0, x1, and x2. But for memory, this thing, the memory base, so we have changed the order. We have made x2, x1, x0, just as the reversal, as well as we have put a NOR gate. Now, why we have put a NOR gate? We'll see that this will actually help you to generate a all zero pattern. Now again, let us see. Well, uh, and in another important thing, if you remember, in that uh, BIST for what you can say for the normal general pass up general sequential and combinational circuits, we used to select a seed in such a manner so that. All the important patterns which are required to test a fault get generated in the first few iterations, so that from here you can reset your circle, some circuit. And many times you also not use the preliminary, what you call the primitive polynomial, because many times all possible patterns are not required for this one. But for in case of memory base, all patterns are required, so we require a preliminary, what do you call this? Polynomial, uh, primary polynomial, primitive polynomial, sorry, primitive polynomial, so that all patterns from one to two to the power n are generated. That is one important thing because all memory location has to be accessed. So, in case of uh, uh, this memory B standard, I mean, what you can call a cell is a uh, that zero zero one. This is a very standard seed. For memory memory based, you can start with this one, and we can, then we'll find out that we'll traverse all the patterns in a random manner. If we you see that we'll generate the pattern 0, 1, 4, 6, 7, 3, 5 to something like that. Okay, so and we'll see what is the purpose of this NOR gate. So we apply 0, 0, 1. So now you see you have a 1 over here. So in this case, the 0 and a 0 over here. So the 0 over here. So you get a 1 over here, and you get the 0 as the output. So the next iteration you will get a 0 from 0 to 0, 0 to 0, and 0 to 0. So next pattern will be all zeros. Next pattern you can find out that if it is a all zero, that is very interesting. That if you do not have this NOR gate, then it is already always stuck with the all zero patterns as you can see. So now it is all zeros. So if this pattern this assume this is not there, then what is the case? It will be a zero, this will be a zero, this will be a zero, and everything will be stuck. Okay, but now so this all that is the case in memory LFSR when you are going for a general combination sequential circuit. But in case of uh, this memory base, all zeros are required to access zero at location of the memory and then again you have to traverse all. So, you just put a NOR gate. So, if you just see that, so this is 0 and 0, NOR of a zero 1 is a 1. So, now NOR of 0, 0 is a 1. So, 0 and a 0, XOR is a 1. So, now it is a 1 over here. So, this will be the case 1 and 0, 0. So, 1 here, 0 here, 0 here. So, this is the next pattern. So, if you just design a base which is somewhat different from the base for normal sequential and combinational circuits. So, this is x one extra NOR gate we have used and this reverse order is reversed. So, you can find out that we generate the pattern in this one. Now, this is not enough. So, we have generated a random pattern which so it will access all your memory cells in this particular order. This order may be very arbitrary, but it is there. What this job is done. Now, another LFSR we also require because you have to traverse. 2, 5, 3, 7, 6, 0. You cannot have this LFSR put another arbitrary seed and traverse in order like 5, 3, 7, 2, 0, 1, not, not allowed. Because if you do that, then you have to remember that first access 0, 1 is accessed, then 0 is accessed, and when you are tra traversing back, which is the order it is being accessed. So, that will actually make your life horrible because you have to remember which is the cell is currently accessed. So, idea is that you just access in this order and then you access back in this order. 
then you do not require to remember anything. You know that first step I access this and last step I access this while it is coming back I will first step I will access this and the last step I will access this. That is the only thing you have to remember. So, that makes your hardware very very simple. So, what we do? We actually so, that has been uh, written in a very elaborate way in this slide that if this is the first order then the reverse order should be exactly this one. So, what actually we do is that one is a very predef predefined seed. So, we always start from one and end in one, but for the other part that is 0, 4, 6, 3, 7, 2 this part, this part we actually reverse I mean uh, you will get in a reverse fashion forward fashion and reverse. And the idea is that we do not I mean it is very difficult I mean to uh, make a LFSR which, which for the full I mean sequence like 0, 1, 6, 5 through should be reverse should be actually. 2, 5, 3, 7, 0 and after that one should be coming right, this should be the case in exact reverse way, but that making that is very difficult because I mean uh, because of the NOR gate arrangement and all if you have the start seed as 1 then you can do very things very simply I mean that you can I mean do with a little work you can find out. So, basic idea is that the very initial seed is 1 we always know that we start from 1 and we end in 1 and the pattern is 0, 4, 6, 7, 3, 2 this is exactly reverse in the other way. So, you will get 2, 7, 2, 3, sorry uh, 5 was there uh, 3 5 and 2. So, in the reverse so it will be 2 5 3 7 6 4 0 that is these two patterns are all reversed and the one is the initial in this one. So, then you know that I have access in this way and the reverse way I will access in this way do not have to remember anything. So, we are using a best in this way, but what we are doing by you by accessing this cells in a very random way what is the advantage the area of the best LFSR pattern generator for the LFSR is very simple. It just requires some XOR gates as well as a NOR gate and extra for the all general patterns. So, we are doing mass test only, but we are not going in a sequential approach. So, going in a sequential approach will make a very high area overhead for the address generator, which is the pattern generator in case of an LFSR. By this, I mean uh, by this technique, we are very easily testing stack at 0 false and uh, transition false because in stack at 0 false and transition false, we are taking one cell and verifying at a line, writing 0, writing 1, writing 0, writing 1, similarly for this cell and so forth. And we are not taking any kind of coupling in between this two. So, we are checking whether it is stack at 0, stack at 1, stack at 0, stack at 1, rising, falling, rising, falling. So, then we do not check in any kind of coupling. So, you access either this one first or this one first does not have any matter or, or uh, there is no requirement of any kind of a sequence, the predefined sequence by accessing this. Only thing is that you should remember that I have accessed this one before this and I have accessed this one after this because otherwise there may be a problem. So, that is why if you are going in a sequence 1, 2, 3, 4 I mean like if you are going on a sequence of this one in the forward iteration you should have a backward in this iteration that is the only thing is required. But if you are going for a coupling fault testing or a pattern sensitive uh, neighborhood fault. So, in this case I mean the architecture will be a bit difficult because you have to remember that cell 0, cell 1, cell 3, cell 4 I have to write in this particular order what is the value you have to write and then again you have to access cell number 2 which is the defective cell and so forth. So, in that case your BIS architecture will be very complex when many other times you do not go on for that complexity because your BIS area hardware will be very very high. And we also discussed that it is it has been observed that if you go 100 percent testing for stacker as well as, well as transitive faults in memory in base. So, a good percentage of the other faults also get tested and that is what you can do given the limitation of the area over it. So, this is the again the same LFSR with just a bit reverse. So, in this case you make x 2 over here and x 0 over here and it will generate the required pattern like 1, 2, 5, 6 and what you call this this pattern which you are generating and this 0 all I mean this one in a reverse way. So, this will be your 0. So, that is the same the, the, this LFSR we have taken this is the LFSR which is generating the forward sequence like 0 1 4 this thing and now we are doing it in a reverse way just the we are reverse this one and the kind of feedbacks are reversed. So, as I told you you generally use 0 0 1 as the seed and then you can see that you can generate the pattern in a reverse way. Okay, that is what is this, this is a very simple LFSR, but we require a pair over this one to go about the mass test. Okay, so, this is about the pattern generator. So, this is the very important part. So, this is the basics of this, this is whole BIST architecture for the memory. So, this LFSR already we have discussed. So, it has a forward and backward address generator. So, it will actually generate the address in some sequence 1, 0, 2, 3, 5, 7 and reverse will be 7, 2, 5 something like this. So, this is the LFSR which will generate the backward and the forward address. So, we are using a random order of addressing and again coming back in the reverse order. So, we have seen that that can be very easily done with a LFSR, but just by having a few XOR gate and a X and a NOR gate that is only very simple. So, this area is very very low and we are able to go in this some part random order forward and some random order in the backward that is possible. Okay. Now, what you do is that. So, if you remember in case of standard based uh, 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 or that is in the beast for normal circuits kind of a thing. So, what we had done? So, we had taken uh, what you say that we have to remember the golden response stored in a RAM and we have done it. But in this case what we do is that 
again what is our where, where you store the random access or I am mean, sorry where do you store the golden response in some kind of a memory. So, in this case already we have a memory. So, we do not have put any extra memory for storing the golden response. So, what we do is that we divide the memory into two blocks. Okay, and what do you do? You write same you ask, ask, same it may be have 0 say with the memory have maybe say 0 to 100. Okay, so, what do we do? We go from 0 to 50 here and 51 to 100 over here. Now, what we do is that you whatever you do with this cell, you do the same thing for this cell. You do whatever you do for this cell, same thing you for do for this cell. Now, what do you do? You read from this and you read from this and you match that whether they are equal or not. So, you have so you can think that this is your golden memory and this is the test memory or the other way you can think that this is the golden memory and this is the test memory. So, whatever you do, you do with two memory blocks separately. Now, when you want to read something, you verify that both of them are equal. If both of them are equal, then you are done. So, this is actually your because you have to write a 0 and a 1. So, whatever data you want to write, so that is that 0 and 1 should be written from some cell. So, this is your write, this is your driver already we know that uh, this is LFSR address generator will be directly connected to your row and column decoder and this data will be connected to your read that is read stuff that is your sense amplifiers and your uh, what you can call your driver circuit to which you are actually writing this one. So, that is the data board, but, but the very important point here is that we do not require an extra memory to store the golden response and do because already you have memory block. So, what we do is that we divide, divide the whole memory into two halves whatever you do with this memory in master same thing you do over this one. So, and while comparing you find that both of them are equal. The, so, you can say this is the golden part this is the fault I mean test part or this is the golden part this is the test. So, there is one very advantage of memory block based that you do not have to put any extra ROM to store the golden response. Okay. So, this was about the definitions I mean all the blocks we have designed LFSR are already told that it will generate the address in some particular random order data that is actually write 0 and 1 in these cells and that is nothing but your I mean what you call the sense amplifier and the driver circuit. So, equality comparator that is one thing obviously you have to have. So, this just you find out that both the data are equal or not. So, these are very simple combinational circuit and obviously, you require a controller to control the control sequences for all of this. So, that, uh, that is very simple and data actually you will uh, have what you call this, this driver circuits and as already told and this equality comparator you have to add is a simple I mean you can call a series of XOR gates. If both the bits have to be equality have to be tested. So, you have to put a series of XOR gates. So, this completes actually our design architecture for memory based. Now, if you find out a fault, so you have to go for repairing as I already told you. So, we are not discussing that because it is pretty complex. Okay. So, with this we come to the say question answer part of it. So, let us the first question is what is the total number of all possible passive network pattern sensitive faults and active network pattern sensitive faults in type 1 and type 2 neighborhood. So, we know that what is the passive fault. So, you know that passive faults was that. So, I mean there is actually some you can think about this this one. So, what are the passive fault? So, there can be some patterns over this area. So, if you are comparing type 1 neighborhood sorry, if you are considering type 1 neighborhood. So, we know that this one say this one, this one, this one. So, you put all zeros okay, and then you are not able to go for a rise fault. So, this is something kind of a thing. You want to rise it still you get the value as 0. So, similarly, if you can have a if you have all 1s here and you want to make a 0 over here, uh, you make a fall like from 1 to 0 over here. So, that you cannot do it because all 1s will keep the value as 1. So, this is all the about a passive thing because there is no change in the, in the periphery of your fault cell. So, that and actually that thing is holding the cell value. So, there are actually 3 types of this thing. So, one thing is that periphery is not allowing to go to 1, periphery is not allowing to come down to 0 or periphery is not allowing you to change it. So, these are the type 1 in the neighborhood. So, this is the type of faults. In type 1 neighborhood already we know that there are 4 cells 1, 2, 3, 4 okay. and 3, 4. So, what is all the all possible patterns over here? It is 2 to the power 4 okay. of 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, 4, 4 cells are there. So, we can have 2 to the power 4 patterns and what are the 3 types of faults? These are the 3 types of faults. So, 3 into 2 to the power 4 all possible NFSs can be possible. Now, we know that in uh, in type 2 neighborhood how many cells we consider along with these 4 another this boundary cells are there. So, there are 7 what you can call 7 peri cells in the periphery of a faulty cell in type neighborhood uh, type 2 neighborhood. So, it patterns is all possible is 2 to the power 7 and what is the number of faults? It is 3. So, 3 into 2 to the power 7 different type of NSF faults can be there. Similarly, if we go for the active stuff, so active NFS we know that. So, what is the idea? So, idea is that let us consider type 1 only. So, there are 4 neighborhood cells if you remember uh, sorry these are the neighbor cells 
and there is some activity change over in either of these cells. So, like uh, for example, already we have discussed this. So, like it is 0, 0, 0, 0. So, it's like if you are changing it from 0 to 1, so it may happen that this guy is also getting changed from 0 to 1, that is it getting stuck and it, it can be stuck at one kind of a thing. Okay. So, there should be some activity either in V 0 or V 1 or V 3 or V 4 and then, then some fault effect is there in this one. So, when there are two type of faults as we know that if V cut is 1, then we can have a stuck at 0 fault here and if V cut is 0, okay, then we can have a stuck at 1 fault over here. Like if the value is 1 here, it can make it 0 stuck at 0 if the this cell is 0. So, sorry if say this cell is 1, so we, it may make it to 0 stuck at 0. So, stuck at 0 and stuck at 1 faults can be possible in this one. Okay, and <laughs> but there should be some activity in periphery. So now each cell can have three values. It can have zero, one, or sorry, four values rising or falling. Zero and one are static, but rising and falling, one of them must be at least in one of the cells to cause the fault. So there are all four possible stuff here: zero, one, and rising and falling. So in this case, four to the power four different type of patterns can be possible in in the cells like 4 cells are there and 4 different patterns are possible to 4 to the power faults are there patterns are possible and how many how many faults are there there are two types of faults one stuck at 0 one stuck at one kind of a thing so all possible patterns are 2 into 4 to the power 4 now if you take a what do you call a neighborhood pattern since a type 2 neighborhood so we know that the number of cells in the neighborhood are how many they are 7 so 2 into 4 to the power 7 Okay, two types of faults are there. Like this is, if you take that type of a neighborhood, if you remember, the seven cells will be around. Okay, and this is the cell. So there are two type of faults. Like this one is one fault, and this one is one fault. So four different patterns are possible in each cell. Number of cells are seven. Number of faults are two. So that many number of faults are. So next question is. So from the last answer, it is clear that testing type one neighborhood is more complex than type two neighborhood because the number it is two to the power seven or four to the power seven. If you remember. Okay, but still, why we go? Why we go for? Well, when you go for type 1 neighborhood, then what is the basic assumption? Okay, so, basic assumption is that if you remember, so in this case in type 1 neighborhood, we assume that these are the 4 cells which can affect it. So, we assume that these diagonal cells are not actually, these diagonal cells are not actually affecting your this because we assume that these are very near to each other, the diagonal cells are bit farther. So, this is the very basic assumption we are taking that, that uh, this uh, neighbor assumes that either the diagonal cell coupling are not prominent or that if in a diagonal cell the fault will also cause a viral rise coupling. The idea is that I mean the diagonal cells, diagonal cell couplings are not prominent because they are more farther away from your uh, central cell or cell under fault. And if even if diagonal cell coupling are there, then fault will also called a vertical or this coupling. So, the idea is very simple in other words saying that the diagonal cells are affect, not affecting I mean that much the central cell only horizontal and vertical cells are causing a more effect because of the symmetry and other nature. So, type 2 network is needed when diagonal components are, are significant, but for in some kind of case if you are going for higher coverage or higher conformity to test compliances. So, we sometimes go for diagonal parts also, but that again you, you know that the power or the number of faults is 2 to the power 7, 4 to the power 7 order. So, you have to pay more time and more cost. So, if you want to go for more accuracy and all those stuff, so or, or more I mean confidence, so higher will be the case. Okay, so, depending on your needs, depending on your test time, so you can go about this okay which which pat, pat, i mean which neighborhood you can take so with this we come to the end of this lecture and end of the course thank you very much for attending uh, the lectures so far i mean uh, or you can say that if you want to take more so you can I mean want to see more see through the handouts which are also given with the video lectures you can download them and there are lot of references there so wherever you have found out that we have i mean uh, because it was the three courses like design verification and test club d one one nutshell so at many times we have to we gave references and we have said that more can be found out over there. So, interesting readers can look through the references which are available in the handouts and you can read in details about them. But being a being a merged course, so we have touched aspects of VLSI design, VLSI verification and VLSI test. So, at some points we could not go in depth, rather we have given you an overview of this stuff. Okay, for any kind of queries, you can use the question answer uh, I mean, uh, block or question answer tab of the NPTEL website or you can directly email us to me or Professor Deka in the mails and we will get back the response. Thank you once again for attending the lecture and all the best for your future. Thank you.